I've always wanted to do a video on critical hit chance and critical hit damage because I understand what kinds of benefits they provide for division players. And I know that the veterans of the division already know about these stats and know their benefits. But if you're new to the division two, this video will show you what these stats actually are capable of doing and why you should consider them in order to benefit your damage output and enhance your experience. As for the veterans, there'll be more questions and perhaps some confusion that happen. And so please, if you can keep an eye out in the comments section to help answer these questions, it'll go a long way. So first things first, when you're applying damage, the damage number indicator shows various colors for different kinds of hits. In some cases, headshot damage will show a different color. A basic strike will show a different color. But in the case of critical hit damage, these numbers are depicted in orange. The second thing that you need to know about critical hit chance is that when you roll critical hit chance as a stat, you have to roll critical hit damage in a complementary way. Because if you have no critical hit damage and you have a bunch of critical hit chance, then none of your bullets are going to do any critical hit strikes. Example, if I had 10% crit chance and 0% crit damage, then none of my bullets are going to do anything in regard to critical hit damage. So what you want to do is whenever you find that you have critical hit chance, Make it a point to find critical hit damage on some other aspect of your gear or entire build. The third thing that I like for you to know about critical hit chance is that whenever you roll critical hit chance and critical hit damage, you give yourself an advantage in regard to your damage. And this helps you amplify your damage output significantly, especially when you do it in the right and balanced way. So here are some numbers to help you see what the potential actually looks like. Say you have 10 bullets and they all deal 100 HP a piece. Your total damage, if you land those 10 bullets on an NPC, will be about 1,000 HP. Now, if you had 100% critical hit damage, and let's say about 20% of those 10 bullets were to land critical hits, then your damage numbers are now improved, and instead of 1,000 HP, your damage is now worth a potential 1,400 HP. This is so, since two of the bullets would actually strike for 100% more damage. The fourth thing that I'd like for you to know about critical hit chance is that usually it gets capped. Perhaps in this current meta, there already is a cap, and over time, I intend on experimenting to discover exactly what that cap is. And if anybody else beats me to it, then great. And finally, on the subject of discussion that we have today is how you can roll critical hit chance and critical hit damage on your gear, and what proportion you should roll them to see if they're actually valuable than other damage types. So, where can you roll critical hit damage? You can find critical hit damage on your weapons, you can find them on your mods, you can find them on attributes for your gear items, and also on brand sets. You can also find critical hit chance on these items as well. So one of the things you can do is you can keep an eye out for these stats and start to leverage them as you receive gear because it's going to greatly improve your damage and significantly improve your time to kill. In some cases, it may be more beneficial to take critical hit damage over flat weapon damage. Because if you look back at the first example, you see that if you had the same scenario and instead you got 20% flat weapon damage instead of 20% of your bullets landing critical hits, your total damage output will be 1200 HP instead of 1400 HP. Now, this is theoretical, but it does show you the benefit of having critical hit damage. But this doesn't mean that you should brush aside flat percentage damage, but instead I would advocate that you prioritize these two stats and in the following order, critical hit damage first where you have the opportunity, and if you have any other roles that you can actually take, a flat bonus weapon damage will come in handy. Now, let's take a deeper dive into how we can actually leverage critical hit chance and critical hit damage, which is actually available on gear. If you look closely, once you start to receive some of the gear and some of the brand sets in the game, you're going to start to see that there is a pattern. Sometimes some of these brand sets or some of these gear will roll crit chance on them. In fact, in the case of brand sets, two of them come to mind, and this is the Suckle of Concern and the Douglas Harding brand sets. On inspection, their bonus already speaks of crit chance and crit damage. In the case of the Suckle of Concern, its two-piece bonus unapologetically grants you an extra SMG damage bonus. So it's very clear that this build wants you to spec to SMG and also not just SMG, but SMG crit enhanced. Now, I think this is just incredible and I think it's going to provide a textbook template for those who wish to build crit chance and crit damage builds as they progress through the game. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but for the sake of theory crafting, we can envision a 3-2-1 combo in the works where players are going to be wearing the Douglas Harding and the Suckle of Concern pieces in different kinds of combinations to suit their builds. I genuinely think that this is a nod from the developers to the old school division community to let us know that they understand how dear to our hearts SMG builds can be. Another brand set which allows more flexibility but is also spec towards the crit builds, if you pair them with the Douglas Harding or whatever, is the Wavering Wear. 
This set grants you 7% critical hit damage and 10% critical hit chance on its first and third brand set bonuses. The two-piece bonus, on the other hand, gives you an enhancement to your drone skill power, but you can always use this to run a damaged drone in order to amplify your overall damage as well. This, I think, is going to provide a lot of diversity for crit builds and for those willing to leverage different weapon classes and don't want to be locked in to the SMG builds. Also, for those who are not really crazy about DPS builds, you may be wondering how can critical hit chance and critical hit damage be helpful to me. I genuinely think that these stats, if you have the opportunity to roll them on your gear, can help you to enhance your damage, especially when you've invested a lot in perhaps skill power for a skill build or maybe armor for a tank build. In the case of these utility builds, you want to be able to give yourself some kind of enjoyment by providing some satisfactory bullet damage in the case that you're in a gunfight. And as you invest in other aspects of your build, it's always nice to have a stat that's just going to help you enhance them without doing much work. But these are just theories in place that I've put, and I still stand by the fact that you should always test your builds to see what works for you, because I can guarantee you that what's going to be enjoyable for some agents in regard to builds will be detestable to some others. As grim as this may sound, this is what makes the Division 2 the complex yet beloved game that it is. So, I hope that you've gained something today in regard to critical hit chance and critical hit damage. And I hope that as you start the game, you are always watching out for these stats in order to pair them in a smart way to give yourself an improved damage output and enhance your time to kill. That's all I have for today. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching and thank you for your audience. I really appreciate your feedback on the last video. And in regard to clans, I've already started a clan, but I'm going to give more details in my next video. Hopefully, I'll see you guys then, and God willing, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.